Hey guys, welcome to my channel. This is Jay from Coding with Jaybird, where I upload weekly tutorials to help build your confidence in coding. Today we'll be having a look at JavaScript, string, and number data types. This is part four of my video series, JavaScript Tutorial for Beginners. If you haven't seen the rest, please be sure to check them out at the end of this video. Let's start coding, shall we? I've created a JS data types folder here on my desktop. And I'm gonna go ahead and open that in VS Code. And you can see a data types.html file that I've created, which has some styles here, which is linked to the CSS folder and the styles.css file. And I also have a script tag at the bottom of my body, which is sourcing the main.js file in the JS folder like so. And in the file, I just have a simple alert message saying JS file is linked. Okay, let's go ahead and open this data types.html file in the live server. And you can see JS file is linked. Everything looks great. Now let's talk a little bit about JavaScript data types. All programming languages have their own data structures. JavaScript also has data types. We'll be learning about the number and string data type in this week's video. Now, JavaScript is a dynamic language that is loosely typed. This means we can create a variable of one data type and then later change the value stored in this variable to be of another data type. JavaScript has seven primitive data types and objects. The seven primitive data types are listed here, string, number, boolean, null, undefined, big int, and symbol. Now we're just going to be focusing on the first two for this video, which is the string and number data type. Okay, so let's get started in our main.js. Let's comment out the alert so that doesn't keep popping up as we type our code. And let's create some data types below. So our first data type that we're gonna cover is called the string data type. So a string is simply textual content. Strings can be defined using either single quotes, double quotes, or backticks. So let's start by creating a simple string. So I'm just going to use a student in a classroom setting as my example for today. So let's create a variable called let student name equal Tom. And I'm going to use the single quote to demonstrate Tom. Now let's create another variable called course, course equals. Now we'll use our double quotation this time, JavaScript. And let's use backticks for our last example, let classroom equal backticks. Now, if you're looking for your backtick on your keyboard, it's on the top left next to the number one sign. And I'll call this computer lab. Now this is known as, this is known as a template literal or template string. Now let's also create another variable called let student age equal. Now I'm going to use a single quote here and I'm gonna write the number 28 in there. So we're saying that Tom's age is 28. So it's technically a number, but we're storing it as a string. So a string can look like a number and it's important to pay attention to how are we defining our variables. So just for this demo, let's create this as a string with the value of 28. So let's demonstrate some of the things we can do with strings. We can do something called string concatenation. Now I covered concatenation in my last video, so if you're looking for another example of it, feel free to go back to my video part three and you'll see an example of concatenation. Now concatenation is simply when you're joining or linking some data in a series using the plus sign. So if I were to log something to the console, let's say student name, and I save this, we would see Tom. Now, if I wanted to practice concatenation, I could join this with a string value is studying like so and save this. Now, if you look to the right, you see Tom is studying and Tom is, is stuck together. So we need to make sure we account for the spaces when we're creating our strings. So now if I save this, 
Tom is studying and everything looks good. So now we've joined a variable which holds a string value using concatenation in our plus sign to the string is studying. Now let's go ahead and join this to uh, the course variable. And we'll also join this, making sure that we have our spaces, to the in the string. And now let's join this to classroom. And as we can see, Tom is studying JavaScript in the computer lab. So we've effectively joined a variable with a string using string concatenation. Now there's another way of doing this called string interpolation. Now what is string interpolation? We are basically inserting some data inside other data dynamically. So let's say I were to create a variable called fave course. So let fave course equals, and now I'm going to use backticks and we're going to use a dollar sign and curly braces for the dynamic portion of our string. So if I want to dynamically display the data or the value that's stored in student name, I would write student name with a dollar sign and curly braces wrapped around it. So right now I've stored the value of student name, which is Tom, in the variable fave course. But I want to add some more data and make it a nice string. So I would like to say Tom likes to study. And now I want to mention his course. So again, I'll display this with dollar sign, curly braces, and I'll type the word course. Now this is the variable name and it's going to insert the value JavaScript in place of all of this in the template literal. So let's say Tom likes to study JavaScript in the dollar sign curly braces classroom variable. Now we're not going to see anything because we haven't outputted this to the console. So let's console log fave course and see how the string looks like. Tom likes to study JavaScript in the computer lab. Perfect. So that demonstrates two different methods and how we can join strings. Now let's go ahead and talk about our second data type for today, which is the number data type. Now numbers include both whole numbers or integers and floats or decimal point numbers. So let's have a simple example where we create a variable called let top student age equal 36. So we're saying one of our top students has the age of 36. Now let's create another variable called average student age. And in here we'll store 32.164. Now if you can see here, this looks a little different than what we did up here. We're neither using single quotes, double quotes, or backticks. We're simply just writing the value. So JavaScript understands that we're storing a numerical value, a form of an integer, in the variable on the left-hand side of the equal sign. Now this also works for decimal point numbers. So we can create 32.164 and store it in the variable on the left. Now let's log these to the console. Top student, oops, student age. And we can see 36 is output and 36 looks a little different. It's blue in color. And we can also output our average student age to the console. And once again, it's blue in color in the console and we can see 32.164. Now JavaScript also has arithmetic operators. For example, arithmetic operators. For example, we can perform the addition operation simply by adding one integer value using the plus sign to another integer value. And we can see 10 plus 4 is 14, and once again it's blue. We can also perform subtraction. So I can take 10 minus 4. And we can see we have another integer value of 6. Now we can also perform division. Now division is done a little differently. We perform division 
with the forward slash. So 10 forward slash 4, and this returns a value of 2.5, which is also blue, and it tells us it's a number data type once again. We can also perform multiplication. So once again, I can take 10. This time I can use the star to multiply with 4. And again, you can see the result here on the right, 40. So we can multiply. And lastly, there's something called the modulus. Now the modulus does something a bit different. It takes two numbers, separated with the percent sign, and it returns the remainder. So when I save this, 10 divided by 4, well, 10 divided by 4 gives a remainder of 2. And here's the remainder of 2. So this modulus gives you the remainder. Okay, let's say we have some variables, but we're not sure what type of data is stored in the variables. Well, we can use the type of operator to see what's stored in the variable. Console.log, and I can say type of, and then I can follow the operand after the type of keyword. So I can simply put in something like a string or a number, but for my example, I'll just say student name. And when I save this, it returns the value string. So this gives us the string representation of the type of data in the operand. So what's on the right side there. Similarly, if I were to type console log type of average student age, oops, and save this, I can see I'm getting a number. And that's because the value that's stored in average student age, as you can see up here, is of number data type. And the value stored in student name, as you can see at the very top, is of string data type. Okay, great. Now that we've covered the type of operator, let's see what happens if we were to try to add a string and a number data type together. So let's say we want to add ages. So let some new variable called add ages equal. We'll take our student age and we'll add it to our top student age. And if we log this to the console, add ages, what do we get? 2836. So we can't possibly get a number that high. So something's going on over here. Let's see what the data type for add ages is. So type of add ages. And we see it's a string. So what ends up happening is when you add a string to a number, it converts converts it to a string and joins the values together similar to concatenation. So JavaScript basically keeps this first one, which is a string value of 28, as a string, and it joins it with this number data type, but it converts this number data type to a string first, and it joins the two similar to concatenation. So you end up with 2, 8 from here, stuck onto 3, 6 from here. So if we did want to perform mathematical calculation, we need to make sure that both variables that we're adding hold the same number data type. Now, what would happen if we were to add a whole number to a decimal number? So if we were to console log top student, oops, student age, which is our number data type to the average student, oops, student age, which is also a number data type, we get a correct answer of 68.164. So what it did was it took this number value and added it to this number value and gave us a proper mathematical answer. So this adds them mathematically and returns 68.164.
And that's it for today's lesson on string and number data types. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you did, please don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel where I'll be uploading weekly tutorials to help build your confidence in coding. Looking forward to seeing you in a week's time. Don't forget, keep on coding.